Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about a leaked review, at least it looks like a leaked review or maybe it was a purposeful review, but a review nonetheless of the Ryzen 3600 which is a third generation Ryzen part which up until now any sort of uh, progress on statistics or any benchmarks that sort of thing on the 3600 have either been provided directly from AMD or we've seen leaks but we haven't really seen many firm numbers and this review actually gives us one of our first looks at what should be pretty set in stone performance from the Ryzen 3600 and then presumably we would see similar core performance from the other uh, processors in the Ryzen 3 stack so the uh, Zen 2 architecture that is the brand new Ryzen 3000 series from AMD so we're going to take a look at some of these slides from this review and sort of talk about what this might mean as we go along for somebody that may be thinking about building a PC in the near future. So first and foremost, this review comes from a Spanish website, which I am not going to attempt to pronounce the name because frankly, I don't want to butcher it, but I do have it translated here on screen, but I will definitely leave a link to the full review down below. I'm only going to hit some of the slides. I'm not going to just straight up look at everything here and go through everything here because there is a lot to digest, but I do want to look at some of the highlights here and talk a little bit about what that means for you, especially if you're somebody that may be looking at the Ryzen 3000 lineup or potentially even an Intel system in the very near future. So first up is Cinebench 15 multi-threaded and with this particular benchmark, the Ryzen 5 3600, which by the way is gonna retail for $200 flat, is actually outperforming a Ryzen 7 1700X. And in this article, I didn't see anything about overclocking whatsoever. So this multi-threaded performance should be from whatever the CPU boosts clear up to across all cores. So this score of 1561 in R15 is an excellent score, especially when you start looking at other CPUs that it's actually above, like the 9700K and the 8700K, which could be a big problem for Intel. Now where this gets really interesting though, for me at least, is in the single threaded performance. Now single threaded here, again, this CPU doesn't have a crazy high boost clock for single threaded workloads and it's still pulling a 196 in R15 versus a 9900K, which does tell me if you can get a really solid overclock on the 3600 here, there's actually a very strong possibility that this processor could top single threaded performance of the i9 9900K Again, provided you have the cooling and provided you can push the overclock, but looking at some of the uh, boost clocks of the other processors in this stack, I'm really hopeful you can push a 3600 to something like 4.4 gigahertz across all the cores, provided you have adequate cooling. And if that is indeed the case, these numbers from R15 are just giving us a really good positive vibe going into the Ryzen 3000 launch on July 7th in that this processor may represent just an un unprecedented amount of performance per dollar for a brand new CPU. We've seen CPUs give us great performance per dollar a while after they've been on the market. The Ryzen 1600 is actually a great example of a CPU can, you can typically get between $110 and $115 brand new right now and that's a lot of performance for six cores and 12 threads at that price but this is a brand new chip hitting the market this could completely reset what intel has to do to compete with amd on a price to performance uh, scale here because frankly if you're getting yourself 95 plus percent of the way to the performance of something like a six core and 12 thread part that intel is offering like an 8700k which you can still find brand new all the time but you're getting it for literally half the cost it's hard to recommend going the Intel direction whatsoever because anything Intel is offering at this price point of $200 is just not competing whatsoever with the 3600, at least in these synthetics. And then moving through the Cinebench R20 benchmarks here, it's sort of more of the same situation. With an overclock, the 3600 may actually perform on par with the 9900K in single threaded performance, if not topping it. So again, more reason to be optimistic about the 3600. Now, as we get onto the actual gaming test here, the uh, GPU does come into play and it was tested with an RTX 2080 Ti, just so you're aware. But in Assassin's Creed Odyssey here, uh, the 3600 is actually doing a great job of getting very close to within touching the 9900K, which isn't necessarily the case all the time. As we move across here to Far Cry 5, the 9900K has a big win here and it's really not even close. Though it is worth noting that the 3600 does outperform the 2700X, so still performing very well for a Ryzen CPU in this title, just 
not really anywhere close to the 9900K. Scooting on across to Final Fantasy 15. Again, getting close to the 9900K, still not winning that race though. And then moving on to Total War Warhammer, uh, Warhammer 2 that is, pretty much negligible across all these CPUs. So this is not a title that's really being bound up by our CPUs because we're seeing almost identical performance across the board. And I do believe that was the last of the gaming benchmarks. So let's talk a little bit about what this means for somebody that's building a PC. The biggest takeaway I take from this review, and I think we're gonna find this as we start to see other reviews that obviously start looking at more and more games. And by the way, if you're a gamer looking to build a gaming PC, don't just take this review's word for it. Really, if you're trying to do the best consumer move here, wait till the CPUs launch, wait till we get all those other reviews, then look at other benchmarks of other reviewers and see if this is consistent, or maybe this is sort of like an anomaly review. But getting back on track here, what this review seems to indicate, and what I think based on all the leaks we've seen, based on all the numbers we've gotten from AMD, and now this review, it looks like it's gonna be really hard to recommend an Intel system over an AMD system, especially in the mid-tier and higher, because Keep in mind with Ryzen 3000, you're spending at least $200 on the CPU. There are no lower end CPUs, at least right now, for the Ryzen 3000 stack. So at the moment, if you're building a mid-tier or upper tier PC for the purpose of gaming or really anything else, it looks like you're gonna get the best performance by getting an AMD system, a Ryzen based system, and then using the money that you likely saved. Because again, if we're looking at six cores and 12 threads, you're saving a lot of money going with the Ryzen 3600 over something like an 8700K. So if we are gonna take that savings that we get from going with the AMD system and reinvest that into a uh, better graphics card, we're likely to get much better performance on the AMD system at the same price as we would be spending on an Intel or a comparable Intel system. Though that'll be interesting to look at uh, PC part picker once we actually have these parts available. And also what's interesting about this review is it was done on an X470 board. Hey guys, editing Shane here, and I just wanted to let you know the link in the description down below to this review actually has the updated review now where this website did go ahead and add numbers from an X570 based system. So you can actually see the difference between the X470 and X570 based systems for the Ryzen 3600. Though the spoiler here is there is actually very little difference between the two systems. Which tells me, and by the way, AMD was already claiming that you should be able to get the max performance out of the CPUs from an X470 board. It's really, you're just giving up some of those extra features, most notably PCIe 4.0, but uh, you should be able to get the max performance out of an X470 board. And because these CPUs are more efficient being on a seven nanometer process, you shouldn't really worry about VRM issues unless you're getting like the 12 core and pairing it with a really low end X470 board. And in fact, you should on pretty much every X470 board, again, unless you're talking about maybe the 12 cores, you should have plenty of overclocking headroom from the motherboards of VRM. So get yourself a decent X470 board, save some money if you're looking for value here, get yourself just a decent X470 board or even B450 for that matter, and then pair that with a Ryzen 3600 you're gonna save a lot of money on the platform cost and be able to reinvest that in a better GPU. So at this moment, if I were somebody that was getting ready to build a gaming PC, first of all, I'd hold off a couple weeks just to see the reviews of the Ryzen 3000 series because that might be the direction I wanna go. If I'm going with a lower end system, there's a good chance I would go with either first or second gen Ryzen. Again, I'd probably wait a little bit of time here uh, so those parts might dump in price a little bit further as the next gen Ryzen launches. But if I'm building a brand new system with brand new parts, I find it extremely hard to recommend Intel right now. And I think Intel, at least on the desktop front, is really gonna have to scramble. And I think they're gonna struggle to come up with a good answer for Ryzen outside of just drop kicking their prices down. And if they're still having supply side issues with the desktop parts, it's entirely possible that Intel just drops their prices down to at least get more competitive. And then if they sell out, they sell out of the parts. And it may be harder to find some of those Intel parts if they do drop the prices and they do sell. Because in my mind right now, the current pricing that Intel has is just not gonna be competitive with AMD's Ryzen 3000 series. But of course, I do wanna hear from you guys. What do you think about this uh, leaked review or just early release review, uh, whatever you wanna call it? Let me know what you think about these numbers. Again, the link to this thing is down below. There are a lot more slides that I didn't go over. So I would encourage you to check that out if you're interested. They're in a very graphic format. It's very easy to uh, understand. Uh, let me know what you think about the review, about Ryzen 3000, all those things in those comments down below. And then of course, if you like the video, 
give it a like, share, subscribe, comment, hit the bell. All those things are helpful to the channel. You can follow me on both Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.